you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. That's what my coach always said. <laughs> hey, and we're back. It's Spencer Foreman and Chris Latham. I'd like to let you introduce yourself. We're back with another episode of Marketing Hub Ideas. Today is Sunday, March 10th, 2024, by the way. Hmm. Happy spring forward today. I woke up to a pleasant surprise of, I still have some analog clocks, but I woke up and I'm like, it's really light out. And then I realized, thank God, it's back. We really should abolish the daylight saving times. We're at a point, <laughs> technology's forward, the farming situation's handled. We just got to axe it. I mean, I was reading in the uh, New York Times, I get the notification. And then, by the way, it's a funny thing, because we're going to talk today about email tactics, boost engagement. I get summaries from the New York Times of the latest stories that I, especially on a Sunday, like to read. But because I get them on my phone and the New York Times is out of their mind in 2024 with that paywall still existing, shh, don't tell anybody, but I use a, a free script that lets me at least read the gosh darn story that you just sent me in your own summary. Because please... Don't dishonor my intelligence by telling me to read your stories and then every single one of the things in the email you sent to me is firewalled. So I use this Ridiculous. thing called unpaywall, right? Have you ever used it? Yeah. And, and there's another one like 12 foot wall where they'll build an 11 foot wall. They'll give you a 12 foot ladder or something like that. Uh, the, the, there's a hundred different services that use really low key firewall, paywall. I don't think I'm cheating anybody because A, the story is already archived. If you just look at the Google archive, number B, you sent it to me, for God's sake. If you're trying to encourage me to be a customer, New York Times, send me the stuff that when you put in your email, I get to read the full thing. Because you're not doing anybody a favor by like going, this is like peekaboo. It's like, look at me, I'm really sexy. Yeah. And then not letting me see the whole thing, you know. That'd be like so, going to Costco where they give the free samples, but you just get to look at it and they never actually hand you the samples. Like, you know, let me taste it, see how good it is, and I'll go buy a box. You know what? That's an awesome example, right? Like if you went around Costco to the sample lady and they're like, look, we've got some pizza here. You can't, you can you can't look, look, you can't have it. All right. So the story was about the daylight savings time, and there's the same mindset of like uh we have in tech all the time. Today we're gonna talk about tactics that work and stuff, but the idea is. How is it possible that in 2024, there's still people <laughs> debating we don't need daylight savings times anymore? And the arguments were amazing, like too many deer will be killed or children, parents don't like to send children to school in the dark. And then somebody responds with, or we could just start school at eight o'clock instead of seven o'clock. <laughs> like, all right. So. I want to put a framework around today because I think our show has been working really well. You and I are both experts in marketing automation, and we both have an affinity for the tool set that's available on the WordPress side of things that we deliver through the WP uh, Marketing Hub or Launch Kit, depending on which flavor. And then we both enjoy the benefits of uh, Go High Level. And Go High Level is a big audience of people for whom we deliver a lot of common sense ways to connect these worlds. Today, let's talk about the same common sense. 2024 human beings who are your prospective customers, your actual leads, what kind of emails work and don't? Because when we started earlier, we we're talking about like the three main channels. There's that metal box on the outside of my building. I think they call it a mailbox, but I'm not sure because the last thing I got was this thing I think they call a postcard. God, That's about good it. old snail mail. Email and text or SMS. So of those three channels, and there's more, but those we could talk about just anecdotally, but like email is the busiest one of all. Yeah. It's also the most personal, like as much as SMS is personal, I would argue that email is more personal just because email is essentially like your social security number. It gets you, it gets you into the door. It's your magic key that gets you into your account and into your life. If you're using an email to log into Facebook, you're using an email to log into your website, you're using an email to log into all the tools. So as much as SMS and feels may feel more invasive, there's more security and more things attached in and around your email. Right. People need to respect your email. Like, don't just be sending junk to people and hoping that they're just going to click around. You have to respect that person's inbox. Well, let's let's take it back to old school because we have this real advantage when we talk, and I love our conversations because we have a slight generational gap. I'm 72 and you're 23. No, I'm just kidding, but we're close. <laughs> but you're in your 30s. Like I'm in my 50s. <laughs> let's put it like that, right? 
And the generational gap is that I do remember days before technology and how real relationships and real human beings interacted. I feel like that is making a comeback. It's a renaissance. We all now have these computers next to our desks that have this thing called a pen with a paper. And the idea is it's simpler often to do that than to try to use technology. But at the same level, marketing tactics have forever been the same to some degree and very different in others. One thing that's different is there was a day when email was never used by anybody, never. Then it slowly became like a popular channel but now it has become the abused channel because along the way, people came up with tactics in the late 90s, early 2000s of doing something called nurturing emails. That is, look, kids, getting an email is such a magical thing. It's like Christmas every day of the year. You want to send 14 emails in a sequence to somebody that tells them about you <laughs> and your product and nurtures the relationship. And in 2024, by the second email, that's eh, goodbye. You are bothering the hell out of me. You're put into spam. The same way. They're clicking unsubscribe, or they just completely ignore your name as they scroll through the emails. I mean, the way I put it is this: I uh, <clears throat> I have a very good relationship with my sister, and we're dealing with our older father and all kinds of stuff. My sister has a, a thousand people she interacts with. She loves to use text messaging. I hate text messaging because. A, it does not convey enough information. B, the meaning behind the information is always muddled. And C, people, because I have to talk into my thing because my iPhone hates my thumbs. <laughs> I always have to correct the words. Like I say, Chris, you're so awesome. And it says, Chris, I'll meet you Tuesday in Georgia. And they're like, what? Like, so I want people to think about it like this. Emails should be as simple as text messages. Yep. And is clear as a properly worded text message, which says to effect, I've got this amazing website built with WordPress, or I've got this landing page or a funnel entrance way could be go high level, but let's say it's WordPress connected to go high level. Go there, do this. I'm meeting you now, not one of these like Encyclopedia Britannica type of emails that have graphics and charts and like people are going to read it. <laughs> The, you feel like the, the same the way, is that generational yeah. or is... No, I feel the same way because I remember even growing up where we'd get flyers every Sunday and you'd see all the specials in all the stores and they have this massive, like in a plastic bag, we call it Publisac in Montreal. And you'd have all the flyers and it's just it's overwhelming at some point. And then you get the ones with the that come in the envelope with the ads on the front, ads on the back, right. you'd open it and there's more ads inside. And it's just, right. it's overwhelming to that point. And I think a lot of people are doing the same thing with their emails where it's like, let me just sell, sell, sell and push, push, push. But if you think of even just your interaction, when you have a thousand emails and next to your Gmail account and you're going through, you don't want to be bombarded. You, don't, you want someone to get straight to the point. Tell me what's, what the offer is or what you're doing or why you're communicating with me. And let me go on with my day because no one has the time to sit to read a 10,000 word email with a ton of images loading over and over again. So I think it's, we've gone too promotional and forgetting that it's still a personal, a P2P, a person to person interaction that we're having. That type of thing could work on an ad or a billboard outside of a business. But if you're going into my inbox, into my personal space, treat it as such and respect it as such. I need, by the way, I, I got to get I, I two things. For, first of all, I want to make these tactics. So tactic one is the nature of the message has to be short, sweet, and personal because otherwise you're going to generate anxiety. You're going to generate an fear of missing out, which is the opposite of what you wanted people. When you send too much and they're overwhelmed with a million things to do and they see your encyclopedia, immediately the anxiety, the stress builds up like, oh, I got to save this for later. There's something in here I got to see. Or they're going to be like, I'm I'm done with you. Like, it, it's like if somebody sends you a text message and it has 9,000 words, you <laughs> this person has lost their mind. Okay. So <laughs> tactic one is short, sweet, and personal because the whole point of this marketing is to engage somebody who is going to buy something from you. You get more engagement when you're provocative, just like in relationships where, for example, I am blessed, uh, although soon to be returned to it, hopefully with my, my back recovery. Uh, besides an active social life as a single person, a single dad, I have a nice dating life. And when you're dating somebody who is a single parent, you don't mess around with like nine. It's like Tuesday, seven o'clock meet here. That's it. Because you know that other person has 800 things going on, right? All right. So 
one of the things I wanted to bring up about this was, uh, um, besides the tactic, was that like the engagement level is proportional to the information. And I think people misunderstand in a world of infinite AI, in a world of infinite marketers, I can immediately smell, and this is me, maybe you feel the same. I can smell this deficiency in people's experience all over the place, including places like LinkedIn. So for example, LinkedIn used to be a place not too many people hung out. And then it became popular for like, it was really professionally a place you could connect and say, whatever. Now the problem is I'm on LinkedIn and I have a sufficient number of followers or links, whatever. Now, anybody who tries to connect with me, anybody, as soon as if I were to, and I don't, if I said, okay, check, bing, 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 all these auto-generated things. I'm like, are you out of your effing mind? Like that would be like yeah. me going on a date where I sent a robot to meet you for coffee. It's like, <laughs> I'm wanting to meet you. Tell me, you know, something about me. Don't auto generate an instant thing. Wait till I say yes. And you see, that's the same thing. Like if I go back to the days of dating with like when the apps first came out, it's if you just frivolously swipe nonstop, you'd be thresholded and they would eventually say like, okay, you're not putting any time and thought into this we're not going to spread your account much to the other side of the table so they could see you as often. So you're pretty much being, um, what's the word they like to use in social media? They're being not blackballed. Um, go, forget the term, but you're not being promoted as much because you're just frivolously swiping. But if you're being more selective, you'll then get in, you'll be able to penetrate into a different market, into a different space. And when it comes to emails, it's like the LinkedIn thing. People just spray and pray. And it's, this, I find it's the same crowd where it's the whole get rich quick. You got to do things in mass. You got to 10 exit. Sure. 10 exit. Once you figured out the market where it makes the most sense, like you still got to fine tune what you're doing. And once you fine tuned it, then expand it. Well, cause there's a difference. So let's break that out as the second tactic. Okay. So ask the five whys, or I'll tell you what I mean by that. Cause I once read about the five whys. It's like continually ask yourself why before you do something. Right? So I'm going to send an email. Why? Because these are people that I want to sell something to. Why? Well, because they're cold, you know. I will jump on the why. That it's That's an important part. But I think most people don't get hung up on that because like, I got to send an email out at least once a week, no matter what. And people just end up in this whole like, I got to do it. There's no thought. There's no care. So let me just type something up, push it out. But it's like, if you don't put any care into it, the person on the other side who, when they do get to open it, they realize, well, there's no thought. There's no emotion. There's no care in this. I'm just going to stop seeing your emails overall. Just like in real life. I mean, for example, but with the whys, okay? Let's change it to from business to personal, okay? I I met somebody I'm interested in having a relationship with, okay? I am going to send them a text because remember, short, sweet, personal, not like, I'm not gonna do one of those like really cool with the graphics emails. I'm gonna send a text, okay? Why? Okay, I want, would you like to play pickleball on Tuesday? Why? Because I, I need a partner and I'd really like to hang out with you. Why? Because I think you're cute and I'd like to really get into a personal relationship. Why? Because I'm 57 and my kids are going to be all out of the house soon and I'm looking for a person for that. Keep going down the list. And so then the message that you state becomes so finely tuned to exactly the response that you're looking for in such a short number of words that it's like laser precision, you know, from space. You just like hit that target instead of, you know, nuclear winter. And the message might be something like, hey, you're adorable. A Tuesday, there's a pickleball court open. Can you, you want to play at seven and then have a drink after? Like that puts all the whys into one message. It's still one sentence. It's a yes or no. It's very easy. And we can attribute the same thing to customers, right? We'll use a couple yeah. examples. Of this. And I like what you just did there. Like just drilling down the whys to whys is essentially what people do with discovering who their target audience is. Like there's the whole like audience persona and build this and that. Just go through the wise. Like nobody has all day to build a guy named Bob and a mm -hmm. guy named Michael. Just go through the wise. And in that, like if you don't know who your customers are and you already have a list of a hundred emails, that's already a problem in and of itself. Yeah. But just going through the wise, you'll see who keeps responding, who keeps opening, and you just focus on that demographic. Like no one's well, meant to be. We're not the rock. We're not meant to be likable, liked by everybody. You're going to be liked by a certain group of people because you have to know. Who I think people are afraid what you just said, like they're afraid not to spray and pray because the Gary Vaynerchuk phenomena or whatever. But I think there's a real backlash. The, I think the Renaissance to which I'm referring is the one that says, 
in the same way we're not fishing in the open ocean we're fishing in a very specific pond or i'm the birdie on the hippo's back picking out tasty mm -hmm. treats that the bird the hippo's like great you know i'm saying if we are very surgical about the types of messages we send as you referred to when it's received people are like this must really be important because this guy never talks to me unless it's a big deal now that's far 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 different than the nurturing sequences of of days of old where it was quantity because like look you're entertaining and it's like you're so cool and special now i think being coy being the person that only gets attention when it's really a big deal is the one who is most wanted the person who's most desired because i think the one asset that none of us have enough time of is time or have enough of is time like of all the things in my life that i value including my relationships and my kids and my like time and health are neck and neck and i feel mm -hmm. like time is sort of a reflection of health because you know you can only make use of your time if you're in good health but at the same time when it comes to actual relationships with customers i think they smell sincerity they know if you've identified like me if somebody were to go on linkedin and say spence i watched your marketing hub idea show on tuesday and i love what you said about this thing i have a question about that i talked to them for an hour but instead yeah. i get this blah, 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 about me 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 and my service is like clearly was sent automatically to eight thousand people i'm like you're done i'll never talk to you again what a way even in that it's you could blend both you could have a pre-built out bottom of the text but have the intro is be something more personal like the whole email doesn't have to be personal just have the first two lines i saw this or i heard you on xyz podcast mentioning abc and at the bottom have that basic script you have for everybody like there's a way to blend both and not make it so spammy and i think what happens people either come through desperation or i just got to keep going for volume and volume and volume but it's just be surgical be precise and just stay consistent going down this one particular path you're eventually going to catch people in this space I mean, we can talk about some additional tactics for that. Like one of which is, uh, there's some people whose emails I really like. Like, uh, for example, he's way, way, way too frequent and way, way, way too wordy. But I do like this guy, Ryan Lee, who's a contemporary of mine, who sends very, first of all, I'm gonna, I'm gonna label a couple of things. And we're not using show and tell today because we figured out there's a lot of listening while people are walking. First of all, I like Ryan Lee's in the sense, and I've modeled a lot of mine after him. There's really no graphics in them. Occasionally there'll be graphics. There's one at the top, or maybe there's something like for a video or, or whatever, but it's mostly looks like it was a handwritten email. Number two, he writes in a style, which I've adopted for the most part, where you separate a lot of lines. That's a lot of old school email tactic, but, but when you have one sentence per line, not like a paragraph, mentally people can, can absorb it easier. It's like yeah. billboard style, like bing, 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 bing. Now, maybe there's a few exceptions. Third thing is, I, or fourth thing, I don't like this when he does it, but I've just changed the frequency. He sends way too many emails. He sends me like five a week, six, I think it's one a day. I, way too many emails. I send one, maybe two emails a week that are relevant to shows that we're doing, like office hours, or things that are really important that have just happened. And the reason for that is, because I don't know how he feels. He's got other things that are hubs and I'm not picking on him. I actually think I've, I've communicated to him about collaborating. I think he's doing amazingly well. He's old school like we are, but I think that for my audience, having a WordPress site, it's like if you built a beautiful health club in the middle of a, a popular place and it's got a huge sign, once you've identified that's where people can go, you don't need to continue to bang on them with information. Just be like, something new in the lobby of the health club and they can just show up like we're doing pilates today show up that's it like that's the benefit of having a hub hello yeah and i think one thing to point out is there are several people that i mentioned like you got to send four emails a day or three emails a day and i think one thing to point out is that only makes sense at scale if you have a list of a million people and three percent you go from a 2% open rate to 4% because you're sending five emails. That I can see that making sense because you could afford to annoy certain people. But if you're more precise at the end of the day, if someone's not opening up your emails, they were never meant to be your client. Like you sending a fifth email is not like, ah, oh, you know, Bob, I signed up for your thing. The first email, I was bored. Second email, but now you send me that fifth email, you know what? I think I'm gonna give you some money and buy your services. Said nobody ever. Because the, the, the thing about it is, and let's talk about products for a second, products or services. There's 
and and I know we're we're not. I normally do show and tells, but today we're just winging it. And I think I like this because nobody's. I was out by my walk this morning. It wasn't like I was looking at my phone. The phone was in my pocket. I'm just listening. So we're going to go with that model. <clears throat> the difference between those short and sweet and personal emails and da 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 is like one of them may be for introducing an event or a thing or a concept that they go to the health club for. Another thing might be as you're bringing up, okay, look, I've got a new product being released or there's an update or there's something that I want you to specifically know about buying. What I feel the important part is here is that there's got to be a throttle a limit on how many times you keep saying, I've got a pack of Trident chewing gum for you to buy. Like, okay, I know you have a store that sells this chewing gum and I can go there. If you keep sending me emails, you're just doing yourself a disservice because I have to turn you off. Um, it is true that you have to be in people's minds, but depending on, and this is a factor we all know of, depending on the price of what you're selling, there's impulse buys, there's let's say tripwire value ladder kind of stuff. And then there's like your big kahuna, your like, I, I call it like a high ticket selling where I'm making the phone symbol with my thumb and my pinky. Somebody has to talk to you. I, I have a lot of high ticket stuff, right? Like my starting point is I have a few things here and there are $9 like launch flows monthly, but my high ticket is five grand. I have people who call me cold and I sell them in the first call because they just happen to have been aligned. So my takeaway from that, if you know what kind of email you're selling, and if you have a high ticket thing, and if you know that you can just deliver something that says, hey, get on a call with me today, it's worth it because you don't need 20,000 people to call you. I need like three or four people to show up from an email, any one of which might deliver me five Gs in my pocket. and fill up my calendar for the month with a couple other people. So I think it's important to know what you're selling as much as the the, the nature of how you sell. Yeah. And also not just what you're selling and how you're selling it. It's we're talking about email in this particular <coughs> episode, which email is an important vehicle. It's an important vessel to kind of get your message out. But I think people forget is you need to think of it holistically is if I'm, if I'm a fan of yours, I got you on Instagram. I got your social media. I maybe visit the website once a week. I got your emails, maybe hit me up on SMS. You could send me five emails, but if that week I'm only looking at you on Instagram, like there's other ways to tell people you have a product coming out, you have something new. You don't need to just keep hammering them home on the same message. And I think that's where having more of a holistic view, because like if you're hiring someone for email marketing, someone else for paid ads, if they're not talking to each other and they're all going a hundred miles an hour and trying to drill this message in, it's going to do the service because one, you're going to turn someone off from email. You may turn someone off from your social, like, okay, every social media post you're putting is an ad. But if you find that right balance and mix of some social, some promotion on email, next day I'll promote on social, next day I promote on the live. And you could then cycle those things around and people won't feel too bombarded because beginning of the month, I get a promo email. Next being next month, you promote me again with the email versus every single email is a promotion. You know, I love you brought it up along with your P2P and stuff. I didn't really even think to mention that, but now that you bring it up, it's really, really a big deal, is the difference between the old school when we, you know, look, 14 emails, and today, everybody has social, some degree or another. Like, I use the big old school ones because it matches the age group of my audience, right? So I have a YouTube channel where all the stuff goes. I have Twitter, X. I have LinkedIn and Facebook. Facebook groups. Now those big four are traditional, but one of the New York Times articles this morning also <laughs> indicated there was a guy who tried to get himself off all the tracking of the big companies. And he realized you cannot exist in the modern world without using those services. So as a business owner, I love your point, which is you have email, but you've got all these other social channels and hopefully people have accepted and are following you or subscribing to you in one of those ways. Why bang them five different times in one day. Like email is just one of five. It's not your only yeah. channel anymore, right? And what do they say? A the image worth a thousand words, a video is worth a million. Like, okay, you got the email, get the video. And sometimes people just need that visual effect or that visual representation. Like, oh, this actually looks really interesting. Let me go check it out further. Right, and it used to be, I'm adjusting because my back today, hello. Look, I'm wearing my high level high level bling and everything. Um, I'm doing my back standing adjustment. I can only sit for like 30 minutes and then I have to stand up. The, uh, the neat thing about these channels is that they're evolving as well, because when we talk about, let's just call it for what it is, AI generated content and so forth. 
I feel like it's very imperative for any of us to identify that this is legitimately coming from us. So for example, I use AI to code. I use AI for some marketing things. I use it to summarize things. But even though it can imitate my voice, I've got a recording, you know, a fake Spence voice in case, <laughs> in case I have to go Stephen Hawking's from one of these operations. Um, I don't do that. I, if by being short, sweet, and personal, I can just say and do the same kind of things that I would do in a normal text message or an email to a normal person and get the effect through, including this is a, I ripped this off of Ryan Lee too. I love that he does this. He closes all of his emails and I do the same thing. Like, here's what I'm doing right now. Like, I'm about to go for a walk. I'm taking my kid to the hockey game. I'm doing whatever. Because I think people appreciate, and that's why I, that's why I both burden and take strength from sharing all my personal struggles with family and kids and relationships, everybody's got something to deal with. And if you share that little tidbit in there, it's a real reminder of this is a human being, not an AI in a world yeah. where I think everybody's a little bit on guard right now. And I've seen that work firsthand. So my fiance's business, she sells chocolates at the good chocolate a little, so a little promo plug. And she writes these emails out that are long. There's some graphics. She's sharing updates on what's going on in the business, how she's going to this convention. And when I first met her, I'm like, man, those are some long emails. Like, no way people have time to read that. But every convention, every event she goes for, like, oh, I love your emails. I read them all the way to the end. I'm like, holy crap, people actually read your emails from beginning to end. And she's personal about it. She's sharing things. And I realize it's if you set a standard of how you're writing things and you're consistent, like I see her like, oh, shit, I got to write these emails. She takes her time. There's no bang it out. Take maybe like an hour and a half just to get a newsletter out and it's really getting the right images and the right, she's exactly, she's crafting it the same way she crafts her chocolates. It's all handcrafted. And to see people come up at a convention, I love your emails. I'm like, I've never heard that in my life. You just say, I love your product. I love this, but people enjoy your emails. But I think we can compare that to, there's a guy I uh, read frequently, Mr. Money Mustache. Have you heard of him? I've heard of him, yeah. <laughs> so he's he's one of those guys who's kind of like uh, the dude who built built with in a sense. Where I started reading him long ago, and when he had a blog, and he was one of those outliers who just I don't I love people like this because it's not my brain, but they could sit there and analyze like all little nuances. And he was quirky because he lived in Colorado, so he was like his life became as much of a shit show as any of us, like with the divorce and custody battles and da, 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 da. But he always ended up financially ahead because he could just analyze all the little nuances, where to live and ride a bike instead of a car. And he does, but the point is his, his blog posts, and his summary emails, Encyclopedia Britannica. But the guy rarely sends one out. Like when he sends one out, it's like getting a book in the mail. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, I've been waiting to read this book. So you're geared up for it. There's another guy, Derek Sivers, who does the exact opposite. Derek Sivers is the original CD Baby guy. Quirky as all hell, multimillionaire. But what he did was when he sold CD Baby in the 90s, it was when we still had CDs for music and you shipped them out. And he was one of the original marketing guys that had such clever things like tell people when they get the order that like the elves are carefully crafting your blankety blank. So they should be patient to wait for it. But he now does the opposite. You never hear from this guy because he set himself up financially where he gave all the money into some trust and he just gets enough to live on. He married a, a woman, had a child, moved to Asia somewhere. I don't know what he's doing. But when he writes, it's all like text-based websites and text emails. So his email yeah. comes in, it'd be like, you can almost hear the clicking of the typewriter. But when you get it, it happens so infrequently. You're like, I got to pay attention. I haven't heard from I thought. Rumors of your demise are greatly exaggerated. So yeah. and I, I believe that's true. One thing I, people forget also is just the type of email you're writing, it being just text-based gets through so much higher. Like I used to work with work for one of the top bodybuilders in Canada and they had a thing where the emails had to be left aligned. I'm like, that's a little weird. Like just center align the emails. They like a little strange, but then I realized, oh, if a friend's writing an email in Gmail, it's all left aligned. <laughs> no one's typing an email and then centering it. I'm like, oh shit, that makes a lot of sense. And those emails compared to the ones with like the image saying buy here had a much higher click-through rate and open rate, well, although open rate's not as important now, than all the other ones. And that made me realize it's really just text. Email like right. it's coming from a friend. That's well, like, I mean, you don't want to be an outlier, but like this is an extreme example. I'm putting on the screen for those who want to watch. It's S-I-V-E dot R-S, which by the way, great domain name. Nobody would understand that, but it's his name. 
nobody would know to type it unless you gave it. But another example of like, okay, he's like, but just look, <laughs> it's a black screen with, it looks like 1999. It's green text with purple. And like everything is just me in 10 seconds, me in 10 minutes. What am I doing now? See my now page. The now page is like <laughs> just it's text. That's yeah, it. I love it. And he he tells how he does this because he doesn't use a CMS. He just like does it old school. And uh Mr. Money Mustache. I'm let, let me see if I can get his website. His website is not so like old school, but like the content is really strict. It is a little old school, by the way. It looks like it's mid 2000s But when you look at his stuff, um He's got like his blog posts, his feature, feature articles, like the true cost of commuting, right? And you go into it and this comes in the newsletter. I'm just scrolling down. You can kind of get a sense when I'm talking about like, keep going and going and going and going and going, right? So these are some examples of one extreme, uh, but I don't think that you have to be necessarily like uh, all the way to one extreme or the other. You You can find a happy medium of like, what I try to do is look, Here's an email. It's hey, it's Spence. Here's what I need you to know. Here's a thumbnail of the YouTube video and a link. Friday, ten thirty, or in our case, on Saturday, ten thirty, or something. You know. And if we're talking about tactic, it's one of the. It's almost like going to a restaurant. You're going to a five course meal. We start with an entree. Start start with an appetizer. Start with an entree. You get a little bigger sort of meal. So all your emails don't have to be short and sweet. You could eventually have mixed in every fourth email could be a longer formatted email where. You either share more information, you become more personal, and you can have another one where it's a bit more promotional. So people over time will figure out a pattern and a cadence that you have. And also at the same time, you'll be able to test and see, okay, after three short emails, people tend to click more of the links in my promotional email at that point in time. Right. Let's talk a little bit about the mechanics because this is something we alluded to in our last show. We had a week off because of my uh, recuperation and stuff. But like in terms of the actual mechanics, we've been talking about using the best part of um, the email marketing capability to go high level, but I don't want anybody to miss out on the fact that there are components in WordPress that would allow certain things to happen as well. But since this is mostly about the using the go high level, I think it applies the same way. It's that you can template out something that looks and feels and acts like a normal email from a normal human being, right? Instead of it being something that is like ridiculous and has tons of graphics and so forth. And in doing so, you get two benefits. Number one, is that you can use that every time you want to like queue up the next version, right? I just, I take the ice cube tray out and there's ice cubes, or I take out the TV dinner and I just change one of the ingredients and it takes me far less time. And this also has to do with your segmentation. So without getting too geeky, but on the CRM level, you can segment whether this is going to your whole list or a certain segment of the list. This is a sales thing, like we talked about, like I have a high ticket thing to talk to you about, or it's a newsletter thing, like this is what's interesting in general in the space. Um, that is a mechanical thing that can be done very easily when you're using go high level, but it can also be triggered by whichever, um, I won't do my show and tell, but like I always do my little tag show and tell, whichever tag somebody has can be used to dynamically segment both what they see in terms of on the actual email, you can have conditional components in it, or it could be on which emails they get in general. So I would definitely take advantage of the speed factor there, even though you're gonna make this look and feel, because you don't have to really map out a ton of stuff that way. You just end up with like, maybe on the one hand, your template of what it'll look like, and then every week, whenever you generate it, or if it's in a campaign, you make a few emails using those so they all consistently look like they came from you personally and they have enough of your personal flavor in them to be looking exactly authentic. And I think one thing when it comes to template, it's not just design template, but even just your layout, your outline of how you're emailing it out. Like one thing is I like to do is have one quick sentence, a bullet point of what they're getting, and then a little brief explanation. And then that's a link to go somewhere else. Because one, it's my time. I don't want to waste people's time. People are busy, but you could have different templates with different layouts. We just got to plug and play, plug in what's happening. You could even give yourself a little note right here, what you're doing recently, right here, what's new, right here, what changed your life, right here, what's the product you're selling. And just, it's like Mad Libs, just fill in the blanks every single time. I think the other benefit of doing that way is that you also make yourself H, this is geek part, but like HTML5 email client compatible. 
So there's all kinds of testing tools you can use. And if you're using the normal templating system or go high level, you'll be fine. But like the more you schmutz you put in there, especially yeah. images and so the more that somebody's filter, especially if they're like on Office 365 or one of these other enterprise systems, they're just going to filter your stuff out. And then your your message is going to look like like the guts were ripped out, right? It's going to be one mm -hmm. of those like text and then placeholder with the alt tag and a weird broken image link and stuff. So instead of trying to get around all that fighting upstream, send a telegram. <laughs> like lit, lit, and Even with that, right? It's California in April done <laughs> like people are sending emails with all these images it's the more images you have the higher chance you have of ending up in people's spam but even with that like we're going to get slightly technical here is your email reputation has to be built over time just like trust just like anything you have in a relationship on the first day to meet someone they're very aware of you on the 30th day you could invite them to your family's house you can invite them out to dinner you could invite them for a long weekend and the same thing with emails, you got to build that reputation of your site over time. And maybe after like two, three months, you can start sending an, an image or two, three images, and you'll actually be able to get into people's emails. I think uh, the, the takeaway from that also, one last thing is that um, if you do it the simpler way, you can end up getting more evergreen value out of it for yourself. Because as a formatting thing, you can have just a a couple lines of text, you make some really cool stuff like D Derek Siver style. Yes, I can put a, th a thumbnail image. Never, by the way, put a real video in. Never, 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 never. I mean, I've seen people put like a YouTube in bed. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Just put the image in with a link to the YouTube. But if you just do it that way, you can use any number of other tools, including your WordPress site to one publish multiple outbound. What does that mean? We just talked about social, right? So you got your Twitter, your Facebook, your LinkedIn, your YouTube, your X, whatever. I, you know, I said Twitter X. Threads. You've got your email. You've got your blog post. Wouldn't it be much better if you wrote one thing and you could just fit it into all of those? Like Twitter X being the limit, right? That's typically 150 characters. Well, do you need more than that? Because like, if you can squeeze the whole thing into one, maybe that's the exception to the rule. How cool would it be? You can just have one thing you make and you publish in five places. And by the way, there's tools that will do that automatically for you. And now you're all over the place. And I, I don't re really do this, but like I have my <clears throat> Instagram, my 57 year old Instagram, by the way, I'm holding my phone up. Like this is how I do it. If you're over 45, you need to hold the phone over 45 degree angle up <laughs> above your, above your chin folks, never below your chin. Never, 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 not at zero. It's got to go up 45 degrees or more, or more. Sometimes 90 is good. <laughs> I do an Instagram because I like the way it modifies the video and it's not selling anything. It's talking about entrepreneurial creator, marketer, motivation in life of running a business, things that happen. But it's 60 seconds. I use Instagram, runs the timer. I got a vertical thing. Now, I don't have text or anything with it, but the point I'm making is like, I do that because I'm walking anyway. And it doesn't take me much time to make a 60 second video. But then what I do is I just, while I'm walking, it takes me half of one lap. I publish it in those five places. It goes on to Facebook. It goes on to X. It goes on to threads. It goes on to uh, Instagram, of course. It goes on to LinkedIn. And I'm done. Now you can see that on the YouTube channel because you can see my shorts. I've had a ton of people who have written me, Spence, I was going through this thing and you talked about it and I feel better because... I realize I'm not alone, like you're struggling. It's not about selling the product. It's about selling humanness, which and I don't think should go without saying either. I got to point out something you said, which I think is gold. And I think people need to understand rather what business you're in. It's people just want to feel like they're not alone. That's yeah. the whole point of life. Like if you were a kid and you were a punk rock kid in your school and everyone else wasn't like that, and you found someone else who was, now you're not alone. If you're a kid was into certain to music or you like playing the cello and you found someone else like playing the cello, now, all we want is someone to make sure that we're not feeling alone. And you yeah. creating those videos because entrepreneurial life is a very lonely life. You're f dealing with all these problems. The other entrepreneur who's your friend who's as busy as you, you may not have a time that syncs up. So even just you creating those videos, people are like, okay, someone else who's going through the same thing I'm going through is talking about something I don't feel alone. And that is huge. If you could convey that in all your messaging through emails and just sharing the struggles you're having from time to time, being more personal, being more vulnerable has much more being, of that. Being, a, being a member of a tribe as well as 
this ties into like that's why we do the show even though it's listening maybe we're doing a video it's like people more now than ever want to see and hear the human being knowing it's not an ai and understand that no matter how successful somebody may be how old and experienced somebody may be everybody as a human being needs and wants the same basic you know maslow's needs but like we want to be loved we want to belong we need a sense of you know victor frankel we need a sense of meaning in our life but when we all go through our struggles that's actually at the heart of all psychology of marketing find the pain is the number one thing that we all are doing as marketers paint the pretty picture of how you're going to solve the pain that's it having a human being who you respect or believe is, is sincere showing their face walking through the park talking about my my kids this or my dog died or you know i'm going through a back operation that actually makes them in today's world i think more attractive than the hey kids da, 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 automated ai spamming to a thousand people kind of like heavy marketing and the other thing is there's a backlash because i want to talk about one weird thing and i i hope to never have this happen to me it's not worth the cost. I, when I was younger, I was very successful, but I was successful in a personal business of real estate. There are people who succeed in America, especially. This happens around the world. We, unlike other, even Western Europe countries, we have a culture that is an, a bell curve of bottom, top, and anybody can climb that hill, hero's journey, get to the other side. But that very same thing that's available to you at any moment, is exactly there was a show when i was a kid called behind the music vh1 it's that same thing where as soon as somebody climbs the hill and becomes big everybody wants to knock them back down again it's called schadenfreude or it's call it the will smith it's, uh, effect it's tall poppy the, syndrome in australia i think that's what they call it what is it i think they call I, it tall poppy syndrome in australia I, I the term i know is from it's a german word schadenfreude i may be butchering it which is the, taking joy in other people's suffering, but it typically applies to somebody who you can, you can look at rock and roll stars, celebrities. This is, you know, like, oh my God, they came out of nowhere. Look, they're the biggest hero. Da, da, da. Oh, who do they think they are? They're crazy. I don't like their politics. Da, 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 and knock them back down. You can see it like Taylor Swift is, mm -hmm. is in the middle of this right now, right? Kanye West had his moment. I mean, you go down the list, uh, Mel Gibson, go down the list. So what I suggest is that when we look at our online marketers, you get the same thing. Like Russell Bronson, God bless that guy, selling potato guns. And now he's a billionaire, practically hanging out with Tony Robbins. Half of the world hates his guts because they have shot in Freud. And I think he is as personal as you can get. I have zero issues with him. In fact, many of his tactics are invaluable. But I think one has to be very cognizant of the difference between keeping it low key keeping it real in your business versus trying to be like bigger than your britches, it comes at a cost. And I think in today's world, I always ask myself because I've been bankrupt and I've been a multimillionaire and everywhere in between, like to what degree does going beyond your like needs and your wish list of things I'd like to have, does that benefit you versus it being a cost? And I always ask myself when I look at these billionaires, these lunatics, like, like, They've escaped the velocity of Earth's orbit into this, now I want to control humankind because there's no longer a need to get anything. They have enough money to live a trillion lifetimes. So now it's like, how much power am I going to get? And that's a very weird thing. Not many of our audience are going to have to worry about it. But on a little level, think about it like, how many people do you need to, to make a lifestyle that you want to live? Is it five, 10, 100? Do you need to build a $10 million company with a thousand employees in order to get that? Or could you just be like the little boat parable where, you know, the guy runs his little boat and he takes out visitors once a week and he makes enough money to feed his family and have a good life. That's where I think we should, that's the five whys in action, right? Yeah. That my and that's one of those things where it's understanding your why, but also having a number to it. How much do I need to live a comfortable life? How much do I need that? I could live a comfortable life retired. Like I could save enough to be retired as well. But to bring this back to the email marketing, because we, we could go off a whole other tangent there is one thing I found is anybody starting a business or growing a business, we're always gonna look at the people at the top of the field and see what they do and try to replicate. And I think one of the problems we have there is what they're doing at that level is not what they did to get there. It's what they need to do to either stay at that level or get to the next level. 
We yeah. need to then look back to see what they did in the past. And I think one of the great things for YouTubers, they always say, look at their old videos, how they started, not where they're at today to understand how to climb that path up. And when it comes to email marketing tactics or any other sort of marketing, although the person you follow who's at the top of the peak may be doing something, you're not at that stage where that makes sense. Like they have to be personal enough, but not too personal where it touches all sorts of demographics. But at your stage, your target demographic is much more similar to the, than to the next person and just be more specific and be more personal with them. And over time, you can then start spreading yourself out wider and wider. Right. I mean, I don't think, I don't think anybody has a right or wrong answer. I cannot begrudge a Mr. Beast in the YouTube world. But at the same time, when you look at, there was a trend recently a month ago of YouTubers, why we're all quitting. And I think that the trend in that conversation was they had realized that they had achieved a level of penetration of the market where they got enough money to live off of. But like there was, negative and inverted exponential return on investment of continuing the grind because it was like the the audience was so flooded with stuff i suppose that they were just like every moment of every day i'm grinding and grinding grinding and i'm like dial it back kids because one of the benefits i think and this will be my last comment for today's show is is that one of the benefits of like having these things of life happen to you over time, uh, children, divorce, custody, health issues, you know, parents getting older, da, 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 having thousands upon thousands of customer relationships. Is it realize like I'm the same guy I was when I was 10 years old, 14 years old, 20 years old, 30. I'm the same person motivated by the same stuff. And the basic lifestyle that I need and the things that I want are covered about 30% up the ladder of what I'm capable of doing with me, maybe one or two other people involved, especially with technology versus in, in the past when I built these huge businesses, huge for me, like 12, 14 people, you know, but millions and millions of dollars at stake and all the liability. It's like at the end of the day, I just grinded and grinded and grinded and grinded. And you know what I got less of? I had zero time, tons of stress. And my take home was not that dissimilar because I have friends who are physicians and surgeons and they have families that they have to pay for everything because they're never there. They're out taking care of surgery. $2 million a year becomes, they put $6,000 in the bank at the end after all the expenses. And I'm like, maybe you should open up that family practice you're always talking about. So that's my last comment is be careful what you're wishing for with the same strategies of being personal, because maybe you can achieve that with a lesser number of customers and a better lifestyle because automation can work in your favor to allow you to focus on just those things. What's yeah. your last and tip? I do want to add day? one thing before my last tip is a good example of someone who sends emails out that you're going to read to the end. And it's one of those things you're reading. It's like, oh, should I actually got to the end? Is Ramit Sethi, he's the guy who does, I will teach you to be rich. His title sounds scammy, but it's actually solid information coming in. But his emails, he then, each email he has that sends out has like a breakdown of someone's budget how much income they're making. So now you're seeing numbers. Okay, how much is this person? How's this person in debt with a 240K salary? Right. And he, as the email goes down, he breaks down and he shares what he thinks they're spending on what they should do to, to finish it. Then 10 minutes later, you're like, I actually read the full email, but he's putting content that's engaging, but also you're interested to know like, okay, how is someone else messing up with their money? They're making much more than I am or making much less than I am. And I don't think he's right. Like it's not a personal email. It's him just sharing his point of view but it's an email that you're going to get to the end. There's not much images and it's information based. It's the information that captures you as a reader to want to get to the end. So I think my final tip would be is one is to be personal, but also share information that your audience wants to read and wants to know about. And if you're not sure what that is, listen, think of the last 10 questions your customers or clients have asked you and write about that. Tactical, right? Tactical. And you know, again, we'll try some things. You maybe what we'll do this week is we'll use the AI tools. We'll take the transcript. We'll break it down into a summary list. Now, the, probably I'll publish it, but I'll send an email that'd be like, "Here's the bullet points," and just click. I love Ramit, and I've followed him for a long time. I'm online social pals with one of his colleagues, like Noah Kagan, who's well known, and I used to play online chess with him. And the point is. They've been successful beyond their means. They've been around forever, but they both do very minimalist type of, of messaging, very unfocused. And they are both talking the other day on that other podcast that I love, which is the uh, My First Million. million my, right? my First Million. Right. So the idea is that there's a whole gang of folks I have some anecdotal relationship to that I can talk to, but I don't often. The point is 
that they've all experienced success and wealth well beyond their means. But they do talk about the same basic stuff that we're saying, which is it's very cool to be aware of why you're doing it. And I think they're very conscientious of the fact they're no longer doing it because they need the money. They're doing it because that's like they're doing the, the meaningful thing and helping people. So for whatever your reason, pick a style, pick an end purpose, pick an audience who are responsive to the thing that you specifically deliver. Because they're very unique examples, all these guys, of you know who they are when they're talking. And I think that's always worked for me as well. Because then you don't end up with that problem, which is one day after working my ass off doing this shit that I hate, I hope to do whatever. I mean, that's the boat parable, right? You want to do the thing that you want to do the rest of your life today by aligning it to the people that will pay you for solving pain points in a way that you want to solve them. And in doing it with less words and less work and more personal, fantastic. Okay. So we're going to experiment ourselves. I want to uh, thank everybody for joining us this week or watching this show. We're not trying to make this more than it is. We do encourage everybody to check out WPMarketingHub.com for your one-stop connection for everything you want to connect your WordPress site needs with marketing automation, e-commerce, membership, and more to your go high level as one system. And it's an either individual or an all you can eat unlimited. So the pricing is incredible for the value you get. You would find that at WP Marketing Hub. Here's the image of where you'll go. And it's just that simple. You will check out in one place. It's a money back guarantee for 30 days, just like it's 14 days for marketing uh, for uh, go high level. You can't lose. Plus, it's got the intuition, uh, the experience of how to get things done that are pre-baked in the WordPress world. So you don't make the mistakes that a lot of people have made, which is building a Frankenstein monster or having shiny ball syndrome. Chris, I want to thank you for joining me this week again. I mean, we're co-hosting this, but we had to arrange this for a Sunday because you were snowboarding and I was incapacitated with a lot of personal drama. But I think this has worked out well. Yeah. I think it was a good episode. Um, honestly, the message is always P2P. Think about it being person to person. That's the most important part in any marketing efforts you do. You keep that as your North Star, you'll be on the right path. Fantastic. And we'll see everybody here on the next show. Typically, we're going to do this on Saturday mornings at 1030. You can look for it over on the, the WP Marketing Hub or at uh, my YouTube channel is consolidated. So it's a WP Launchify which is my central brand. That's a conversation for one of our other shows on why we're doing it that way. We'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Ciao.